Hello, everybody. My name is Salvador Pineda. I'm a member of the OASIS Research Group at the University of Malaga in Spain. And today I'm going to present you a joint work with my colleagues uh, Juan Miguel Morales and Asunción Jimenez Cordero about data driven screening uh, of network constraints for unit committees. Uh, so the, just a little bit of motivation, we are going to address a short-term decision problem focusing on the spatial dimension and uh, we are going to use uh, classification techniques. Uh, more specifically, we are going to solve the unit commitment problem. Uh, this is a problem with uh, usually one day uh, time horizon in which uh, we are trying to decide the generation commitment, the generation dispatch and the power flows in the network in order to minimize the production costs. And then we have some technical constraints like <coughs> generation meeting demand and some technical limits of unit and lines. Um, this is a more uh, uh, a mathematical formulation of the unit commitment problem in which the X uh, uh, variables are real and represent the power dispatches and the power flows and the Y variables are, are discrete or represent the status, uh, the commitment status of, of the units. Then we have uh, two sets of constraints. These ones representing the technical units of the, uh, technical limits of the generating units, and these are the technical limits of the network. So even in the case that all these constraints are linear, this problem is, is empty hard just because of the, its combinatorial uh, nature. So, uh, for example, here we have a, a, a mixed integer uh, linear optimization problem where we have uh, one continuous and one discrete variable and four constraints. Uh, since uh, these uh, blue points here are the only feasible uh, solutions, and since we are trying to maximize x plus y, this point A is the optimal solution. So we are going to discuss about the different uh, constraints of this problem. So for example, constraint 2b is binding up the optimal, and then we're going to denote this constraint as active constraint. Constraint 2c is just not binding, so it's going to be uh, an inactive constraint. Uh, constraint 2d is, is also inactive, but it's more than that, it's, it's redundant, because if we remove it, the feasible region is going to be exactly the same. And then finally, we have a very special type of constraint. This is constraint to E here, uh, because uh, this constraint is, is not binding at the optimum, but if we remove it, the optimum is going from A to B. So these are a very dangerous uh, type of constraint that we are uh, calling quasi-active constraints. And uh, this is a mathematical formulation of the unit commitment problem uh, in which we have some assumptions, like this is a single period, DC power flow uh, equations. We have both thermal and renewable units that the demand is, uh, is assumed to be known, and we have no failures. Uh, these are the uh, power balance equations, the technical limits of the unit, and these are the, the maximum flows uh, through the network. So what we are going to do next is uh, to compare eight different methods to remove this uh, type of constraints in order to reduce uh, the computational uh, burden of this uh, unit commitment problem. So the first of the method is just a benchmark method in which no uh, network constraints are removed and then the computational time is going to be very high. Uh, the next method is uh, the single bomb pass method in which all constraints are removed. It's going to be very fast. It's going to provide a solution close to optimal if the network is uh, not very congested, but in general, the solutions are going to be highly suboptimal. Then we have the perfect information. This is a very interesting uh, approach in which we are going just to remove the constraints that are binding or that are active at the optimum. And this, you cannot do this in reality, right? Because uh, you would have to solve the problem to know which constraints are going to be active. But this is just for, for uh, benchmarking purposes as well. And of course, this method, if you remember this example, 
is uh, is going to remove uh, this is is going to remove wrongly this uh, constraint here because it's not it's not uh, active at the option. And then the naive method. This uh, this method uh, relies on historical data and it's just going to remove any uh, capacity constraint that has not been active in the past. Then we have a more advanced, let's say, uh, method. For example, this uh, cons uh, constraint generation method is going to start as a single bus method, removing all constraints. Then it, it's going to compute the flow through all the lines. And if uh, one flow is above the maximum capacity, then it's going to include that constraint. And then it's going to iterate. It's going to uh, it guarantees that the solution is going to be the same as the benchmark, but the uh, computational time may be very high because of all the iterations uh, needed. Then we have the method proposed by Rold and Moldsam in 2019, and this is uh, very smart. In this uh, approach, they solve uh, two optimization problems in which uh, uh, two optimization problems per each line of the network, and each of these optimization problems try to maximize the flow through a given line L tilde. So uh, you can decide the, the, the demand uh, you want for each node among a given limit, and then you can dispatch the generators as, as you want, also complying with the limit, to uh, try to congest a given line. Even, even uh, under the assumption that you can decide whatever demand and generation you want, you cannot uh, congest a given line, then you can safely remove that constraint and then reduce the computational burden of the unit coming from it. And then this is the method we propose. It's a data-driven method in which we are going to uh, learn if uh, the congestion of, of, of lines uh, using statistical learning. So one advantage is that we don't need any, uh, to, uh, any additional optimization problem that is not only uh, going to re uh, remove redundant constraints as the previous, uh, previous uh, method, but also inactive constraints. And the method we are going to use is the, is the k nearest neighbors, because it's, it's simple and very uh, interpretable. For example, uh, we assume we have a set of uh, data of, uh, of the demand in the past, and then the congestion status of a given line. Then if a new time period uh, t hat uh, comes, then we find the closest uh, neighbors uh, as the distance between these uh, demands. Then uh, if, uh, let's say we pick, I don't know, like uh, five neighbors. So if all uh, the neighbors of this uh, new time period uh, have an uncongested line, then we assume that we can just uh, remove that constraint. However, if only one of these neighbor has a line congested, then we keep uh, the constraint of this, uh, of this uh, transmission line. So this is just an illustration of our method where we have a set of uh, historical data. The red points represent uh, data for which the line was congested and the blue points uh, for uncongested uh, cases. Then the, the black point is the new data we find the closest uh, five neighbors. So in, in two of them, the line was congested. Then as I said before, this is not a democratic uh, vote. And then uh, the, the line for these uh, new data points assumed to be, uh, well, uh, we assume it might get congested and then we, we just keep uh, this, uh, this constraint. And then finally, we, we combine the data-driven and the constraint generation method. Uh, first, we just use the data-driven uh, method to remove uh, a lot of constraints very uh, fastly. And then we check the forward flow through the lines and we iteratively add the, the, the constraints that are violated. Uh, it's going to guarantee also the same solution as the benchmark, but it's going to require a little bit more computational time than the, than the purely data-driven method. We have tried in, a, in the IEEE 96 uh, test system. Uh, we chose, in which we chose 300 uh, training days and six, uh, 60 test days. And we 
tried all these methods for two different cases, a low and a high congestive case. And this is how we're going to compare the results. First, we have the original network, we saw the benchmark model, and then we have the exact commitment and, and the exact results. Then we try each of the four methods, uh, the eight methods uh, I presented uh, before to screen the constraint. We have a reduced unit commitment problem. We'll get some approximated commitment and then some approximated results that we are going to compare with the, with the benchmark results. For example, in this uh, low congested case, here we have the, all the methods, the percentage of uh, uh, constraints that are removed, and uh, the errors in, in the objective function, the inflexibility, and then the time reduction. So uh, some interesting things here, for example, that the single bus uh, get very acceptable results. Uh, it removes, of course, all constraints, uh, the time reduction is very high, and the errors are not are acceptable. Um, however, we have five uh, methods that provide the exact results as the benchmark model, meaning that if, you, if your network is, uh, is not very congested, uh, uh, doing uh, network uh, uh, screening is not a very difficult task. Among all these, it's uh, interesting that the, the role method, even though the network is not very congested, is only uh, uh, removing 85% of the, of the constraints because this method is very conservative. And among the, all the methods uh, getting this exact uh, solution, the naive and the data-driven are the ones with the highest uh, time reduction. Then we have a high congested case. This is a, a more the challenging task. As you can see, the single bus is not providing very, very good results. And the perfect uh, method is also uh, yielding some errors, basically because of the quasi-active constraint. The constraint generation is, uh, <clears throat> the solution is, is, the, is, the, is the original one but the time reduction is not very, very impressive, basically because of the iterative uh, procedure. The role method is only removing around 22% of the constraints, and then the time reduction is not very high either. The data-driven is, uh, is uh, providing good results. The time reduction is, is very impressive uh, at the expense of having some inaccuracies in the objective function and, and, and some inflexibilities. And, but if we combine this data driven with the constraint generation, we get the, the original solution and, and, with, and we only require 30%, 32% of the, of the original time. Um, we have also tried in a, in a, a real size uh, 2000 bus uh, system. Um, these are the results. The conclusions are very similar to what uh, <clears throat> we saw before. And this is a more realistic uh, case, as I said. Uh, you can see that uh, we have like four methods with the uh, more or less uh, with uh, the same solution as the original as the original problem. The data-driven method we propose uh, involves very tiny uh, uh, errors in the objective function and very small inflexibilities. And you can see that the the time reduction is very impressive. It's only two percent of the original computational time but if you are not willing to to if you want to completely remove these uh, these uh, inaccuracies then you can combine it with the constraint generation method you send the original solution and you increase a little bit the computational time but it's still only five percent of the of the original uh, computational time then, just as a summary, we have the, 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 the benchmark of the, of the original unit commitment problem that takes uh, a very long time. We have two methods that reduce the computational time a bit, but not uh, significantly, but for different reasons. The constraint generation, because it has to iterate a lot, and the role method, because it's very conservative and it doesn't remove a lot of uh, constraints. Then we have five methods that uh, uh, reduce a lot the computational time. The single bus and the perfect uh, information method um, are not very good at uh, recovering the original solution. 
the naive uh, and the data driven uh, are a little bit better, but still involve some uh, inaccuracies. And the combination of the data driven and the constraint generation uh, has it all and is able to uh, get uh, the original solution at a very uh, reduced uh, computational time. Uh, so thank you all for the attention. And you, here you have the OASIS uh, website and my email. If you have uh, any further questions, I'll be happy to, to address them. Thank you.